The main purpose of this section is to give all operating personnel a basic understanding of the engine's most essential functions, how the systems work, to ensure that all operating personnel are able to locate, recognize, and identify all essential components within the systems, and execute the daily, weekly, and monthly inspections and maintenance routines. The engine transmits signals from the alarm and monitoring system via the junction box. These signals may be observed while the engine is running, thereby making it easier to monitor the operation of the engine. In addition to these transmitters, the engine is equipped with numerous manometers and thermometers, which should be logged on a daily basis and compared to the values observed on the alarm and monitoring system. If the signals monitored by the alarm and monitoring system are outside the preset interval, the system will trigger an alarm. Transmitters and switches on the engines and signals for the safety system, which will result in the engine shutdown if the values are outside the preset interval. Two overspeed trips are fitted to the engine, one mechanical and one electro-pneumatic. The mechanical overspeed trip is triggered by a spring-loaded weight on the camshaft, while the electro-pneumatic is triggered by the electric signal transmitted by Tarco Relay. Click on the button. The governing system. Upon a start signal from the ship auxiliary engine's control system, starting air is led to the system. The Tarco relay receives the signal from the magnetic pickup on the flywheel cover, which indicates the engine speed. When the speed exceeds 300 revs per minute, the Tarco relay sends the signal to the speed controller indicating that the engine is running and starting air is shut off. The speed controller receives the speed signal from the magnetic pickup on the flywheel cover. While the engine speed is below normal running speed, it sends signals to the actuator fitted on the flywheel end of the engine to increase engine speed. 
the actuator transforms the electric signals to mechanical movement, and through arms and linkages, it changes the admission of the fuel oil injection pump. In multi-engine systems, when the engine achieves normal running speed, the synchronizers start comparing frequency phases and voltage on the net side with the corresponding values on the generator side. When they are equal, the synchronizer closes the circuit generator breaker, and the generator set is connected to the bus. The synchronizer is automatically switched off afterwards. The governing system. When the circuit generator brake is closed, the speed controller receives a signal indicating the load of the engine from the sensors in the switch gear and the signal showing the load of the auxiliary engines in the vessel. If the load of the engine diverges from the wanted load compared to the other engines, the speed controller changes the signal to the actuator to change the admission on the engine. When a change in the load in the main bus occurs, the generator will be forced to increase its output. Since the engine speed is constant, determined by the frequency on the main bus, the increased load from the generator results in automatically increased power output from the engine by increasing the admission. The governing system. Click on the red box to find out more. The electrohydraulic actuator is fitted on the flywheel end of the engine. The actuator receives electric signals from the speed controller, which it transforms to mechanical movement. Through arms and linkages, the actuator alters the admission to the fuel injection pumps, thus regulating the output from the engine. The linkages and arms leading from the actuator to each of the fuel oil injection pumps must always work smoothly. This should be checked every day, and grease added and old joints and coupling maintenanced when needed. Fire. There will always be a certain danger of fire when running a diesel engine. A combination of leaking fuel oil and hot engine parts may start a fire that can be very damaging to the engine, and in some cases dangerous to engine crew. Leakages in the high pressure part of the fuel system may create situations where the probability of a fire increases. It is of utmost importance to undertake inspection of these parts and carry out preventative measures against this on a regular basis. Thermal hazards: fuel oil pipes may be very hot and should not be touched, even though they are insulated. Beware that fuel oil pipes leading from the heavy fuel oil feeder booster module to the engine may be steam traced. When performing maintenance in the fuel oil system, remember that heavy fuel oil is very hot. Fuel oils are flammable and should be treated with care. They may also irritate skin, so rinse off fuel oil as soon as possible. Take note not to wear clothing that is soaked with oil. All Alsteinbergen main and auxiliary engines can be operated on heavy fuel oil under certain conditions, which include heavy fuel oil and lubricating oil quality, and which equipment is needed. A safety indicative valve is fitted outside the cylinder head. By means of this valve, the maximum pressure in each cylinder should be measured once a month. The measuring must be carried out with 100% load on the engine. Log the maximum combustion pressures and exhaust temperatures. Find causes and rectify if combustion pressure in one cylinder differs more than three bar from the average maximum at full load. Abnormal change in the exhaust temperature of one cylinder is indicated.
The feeder booster module feeds heavy fuel oil to the engines. The module consists of equipment ensuring that the fuel oil is correctly filtered and that it will have the correct temperature and viscosity when entering the engine. The feeder booster module consists of the following main components. Two suction strainers, two feeder pumps, of which one is a standby pump, mixing pipe slash de-aeration vessel, two booster pumps, of which one is a standby pump, two fuel heaters, automatic filter with separate manual bypass filter, viscosity control system, duplex fine filter. Inspection and maintenance. The changeover valve is equipped with a switch for heavy fuel or diesel oil operation. A light indicates that the engine is running on marine diesel oil or heavy fuel oil. Oil in a disconnected fuel oil system can circulate through the valve and is thereby kept heated to correct temperature. In addition to logging the fuel oil pressure after the filter, the filter elements have to be checked at least once a month. How often they have to be replaced depends on the fuel oil quality. Make sure that the filter that is going to be dismantled is not in operation by checking the cock position. Open the vent plug. Empty the filter housing of diesel oil by unscrewing the plug. This is not necessary for checking the element. Unscrew the nuts and remove the cover. Remove the filter element from the housing and check the element. Wash out all oil sediments in the filter housing. Blow the housing clean with compressed air. Place the text in the correct sequence. The fuel oil injection pumps inject the correct amount of fuel into the combustion chamber via short high pressure pipes and the injection valves. The pumps are driven by the camshaft via the push rods and regulated by the regulator via the link arms. All engines running on heavy fuel oil are equipped with a cleaning system for the fuel injection pumps. It is of great importance to check the control levers and fuel pump wax weekly for sticking. Tightening torques for nuts and high pressure fuel pipes must be inside the tolerance given. Too much tightening may lead to reduced flow of fuel to the cylinders due to narrowing of the pipes. All engines running on heavy fuel oil are equipped with a cleaning system for the fuel injection pumps in order to prevent the control rod and sleeve from getting dirty and sticky. The purpose of the system is to prevent the control rod and sleeve from getting dirty and sticky. The system uses marine diesel oil from a separate tank for cleaning. The pump is pneumatically operated and needs control air supply. Working pressure is 3.0 bar. The fuel injection pump cleaning system should always be operating when running on heavy fuel oil. After cleaning or overhaul of the fuel injection pumps, start the cleaning system before the pumps, check the diesel level in the cleaning system tank. The fuel oil injection valves should provide the injection of fuel oil to the combustion chambers. When operating on heavy fuel oil, the nozzles have to be cooled. 
This is done by the nozzle temperature control system. A nozzle should not be disassembled for inspection or changed unless the single cylinder exhaust temperature deviates considerably from the average. By atomizing, we understand that no solid beam of fuel shall be present. Complete mixing of fuel and air is of vital importance to the combustion process. High exhaust temperature in one cylinder may be caused by leaking valves, incorrect injection timing, or a leaking nozzle. The problem is easily identified by switching two valves and observing if the problem follows the nozzle. The cooling medium in the nozzle temperature control system is oil. The nozzle coolant has to be circulated also when the engine is running on diesel oil. The coolant temperature must be kept within the prescribed limits. Too low temperature may cause corrosion on the nozzles. Clean the filter once a week by turning the handle on the filter housing. Click on the components for further information. The engine has two cooling water systems, one high temperature jacket water system and one low temperature system. Only the high temperature system will be described here. The high temperature system is the freshwater cooling system. During operation, or just after the engine has been stopped, most of the engine will be hot. Touching the engine parts may cause burns. In this system, be especially aware of the following parts. Cooling water pipes may become up to 90 degrees Celsius. The operator should always be aware of the high water temperature when working with parts of the cooling water system. Pay attention to how the additives are stored. The additives of the cooling water may involve a health risk, especially when highly concentrated. The operators are responsible for keeping updated with the producer's warnings on the containers or data sheets. Parts of the engine to be cooled by the jacket water system are the cylinder block, the cylinder liners, the cylinder heads and the turbocharger. Control of cooling water quality is very important to prevent corrosion, sediments and surface growth of the jacket water cooling system. It is important to use inhibitors in the jacket water both for fresh water and for distilled water. When using inhibitors, the service instructions have to be followed very carefully with respect to the water quality, supplements, volume, treatment and storage. Changing the high temperature cooling water system. Empty and flush the cooling system thoroughly before commencing treatment to remove as much sludge and rust as possible. 
If the system is exceptionally rusty, it is advisable to repeat this procedure after the first week or two of treatment. Click on the red blocks to find out more. The jacket water cooler removes heat from the jacket water and transfers it to the raw seawater system. The plate heat exchanger consists of edge-clamped frames within which a number of plates and gaskets are compressed. It is of great importance to inspect the high temperature water cooler during the running in period in order to gain experience of determining the correct intervals for cleaning. When the cooler is out of operation for a longer period, empty it, open it and clean it. The jacket water pump is an engine-driven centrifugal pump type. It delivers water for cooling the turbocharger and the higher temperature section of charge air coolers for engines equipped with two-stage charge air cooler. The roller bearings are lubricated by the main lube oil system. Do not operate without a proper water supply. This will destroy the pump. If observing lubricating oil or water coming through telltale holes, replace both sealing rings to ensure satisfactory sealing. The heater module consists of an electric pump and an electric element. The purpose of the heater module is to keep the engine temperature at approximately 50 degrees Celsius while the engine is in standby mode. Never operate without a proper water supply because that will destroy the ceramic seals in the pump immediately. The purpose of the regulating valve is to adjust the jacket water flow rate. Rocker Arm Lubricating System. Click on the red blocks to find out more. The relief valve of the system is mounted on the filter. There is a cock and a handle on the filter housing. There is a function of bypassing and cleaning of the filter respectively. The F mark on the cock corresponds with the mark on the filter housing during normal operation. If not, the filter is not in use. The filter element should be cleaned once a day. This is done by turning the handle on the filter housing a few turns. Clean the filter element by clicking on the handle.
The rocker arm lubricating oil pump is a tandem pump of the gear type. It is driven by the crankshaft gear wheel. In addition to operating as a rocker arm lubricating oil pump, it serves as a fuel oil feed pump or a nozzle temperature control oil pump. To prevent leakage from the pump into the engine, the space between the sealing ring and the pump is drained through telltale hole 1. If a leakage is observed, the pump has to be removed so that the location of the leakage can be determined and mended. If a leakage is observed from telltale hole 2, the sealing ring, or at least one of the pumps, will have to be replaced, depending on which is faulty. Inspect the telltale hole monthly. The purpose of the strainer is to collect sludge and cause particles in the lubricating oil preventing damage to the pump. Unscrew the drain plug. Pull out the strainer element and clean it. Remove sludge in the strainer housing. Reinstall the strainer element. Reinstall the plug. Watch the lubricating oil pressure until the reading is normal and the low pressure alarm is off. Main lubricating oil system. Thermal hazard. During operation, or just after the engine has been stopped, most of the engine will be hot. Touching the engine parts may cause burns. In this system, be especially aware of the following parts. Lubricating oil pipes may become up to 70 degrees Celsius. Lubricating oil hazards. There will always be a certain health risk concerning handling of lubricating oil. Inhaling fumes over prolonged time or swallowing will lead to intoxication. Lubricating oil in eyes or on sensitive skin will cause irritation. For specific hazards and countermeasures applying to lubricating oil, always read the producer's information on the containers and data sheets. Click the buttons to find out more. The oil level in a running engine should always be between the maximum and minimum levels on the dipstick. Try to keep the oil level as close to maximum as possible. The level in the oil sump should be measured manually every day. In addition to the electronically made measurements of temperatures and pressures in the lubricating oil system, all thermometers and manometers should be checked and recorded manually once a day. It is of great importance to show cleanliness when changing the lube oil. Arrange the text in the correct order. The priming pump is an electrically driven pump of the gear type. It starts upon the engine's stop signal and is used to circulate oil in the system during periods when the engine is not running. The pump may be turned off during periods of longer standstill. 
When the engine has not been operating for several days, the priming pump must be started at least one hour before engine start-up. The main lubricating oil pump is a gear-type pump driven by the crankshaft gear wheel. Built into the pump cover is a safety valve protecting the pump and the pump drive. The filter may be cleaned while the engine is running. To avoid interchanging of internal filter parts, never dismantle more than one centrifugal filter at a time. The oil is accelerated to high speed and is then thrown against the inner walls of the rotor, where particles heavier than the oil will fasten to a compact mass. The rotor has a removable bowl to facilitate easy cleaning or replacement and is lined with a paper insert for easy cleaning. The cleaned oil leaves the rotor to the screen and enters the drive chamber. The oil is expelled through twin jets which spin the rotor and finally leaves the filter flowing to the oil sump. Close the valve leading oil to the centrifugal filter. Drain the filter for one hour before dismantling it. Slacken the safety clamp. Unscrew the cover nut. Lift off the cover. Allow the oil to drain from the nozzles. Lift off the rotor assembly with extreme care to make sure that the bearings do not get damaged. Unscrew the rotor cover nut and separate the rotor cover from the body. Remove the standpipe and clean. Remove sludge from the inside of the rotor and clean thoroughly. Clean nozzles with brass wire. Renew O-ring if necessary. Plate heat exchangers dissipate excessive heat from the oil. It is very important to inspect the oil cooler during the running in period due to lack of sufficient data of the cleaning process. When out of operation for a longer period, the heat exchanger should be emptied, opened and cleaned. The cleaning of the plates is important to restrict corrosion and to keep the heat transfer rate at maximum level. The plate heat exchanger should be inspected and cleaned at regular intervals. Intervals are dependent of operating conditions. Temperature difference of the oil before and after the cooler should be monitored every day. When monitored values diverts from reference values, the oil cooler should be inspected and cleaned. The lube oil filter is a duplex type. Normally, both filters are operating.
During maintenance or in case of malfunction, one filter may be shut off by using the cock. Click on the button. If there is high viscosity or the filters get dirty, the pressure drop across the filter increases. The valves inside the filter will open and some oil will flow directly through the strainer. If this is not sufficient, the valve will open and send part of the oil unfiltered through the filter unit. This position will bypass the right filter. Both filters are operating. Place the correct filter elements aside the unit before starting to dismantle. Clean and dry all parts thoroughly. Mount new filter elements. Check all gaskets to ensure there is no damage. Replace strainer, cover and drain plug. Fill the filter and ventilate the air from the filter. Put the cock in the desired position. Check for leakage under normal running conditions. Fill up the new filter slowly before switching between them. The filters should be inspected at least once every six months, even if the alarm is not triggered. Click on the images for enlarged views. Heavy fuel oil only. Marine diesel oil and heavy fuel oil. Heavy fuel oil only. Marine diesel oil and heavy fuel oil. Marine diesel oil and heavy fuel oil. The main functions of the control air module are to reduce air pressure to 7 bar, to filter the air, and remove humidity. Draining of condensed water must be done every day. Check manometer air pressure, 7 bar. Note the starting air shut-off valve must be opened to lead air from the bottles to the main starting air valve before the engine is started.
to provide sufficient information about operational parameters and to assure that the operating staff will notice significant changes in the system, it is important that the values from the instruments are checked and recorded every day. Click on the red blocks to learn more. Start Air Distributor. Supplies starting air to the cylinders in correct order. It is driven by the camshaft. The relief valve protects against overpressure in the system. If the metal membrane in the relief valve is broken, the failure in the starting air system has to be detected before start. It is very important to place the disc correctly. Refill the lubricating chamber with grease twice a month. Starting air compressors should have a sufficient capacity to keep the pressure in the starting air bottles sufficiently high to start the engine. Fill the bottles from atmospheric pressure to maximum pressure in 60 minutes. The charge air and exhaust system. During operation and just after the engine has been stopped, most of the engine will be hot and touching the engine parts may cause burns. In the system be especially aware of the following parts. The turbocharger and connected piping will get extremely hot. The charge air receiver may reach 70 degrees Celsius. The exhaust system will get extremely hot. Even though the exhaust manifold is well insulated, flanges, especially close to the turbocharger, may cause severe burns. Air is drawn through the compressor side of the turbocharger and continues to the charge air cooler fitted beneath the turbocharger. After the charge air cooler, the charge air goes through the manifold. From the manifold, the air is distributed to each cylinder. After combustion, the exhaust valves open to the exhaust manifold. The exhaust manifold leads the exhaust flow back to the turbocharger where it drives the turbine rotor. Thereafter, it is carried through possible heat exchangers and silencers to the atmosphere. Note. When operating on heavy fuel oil, the exhaust temperature will increase somewhat due to the slower combustion of that type of fuel. An increase of approximately 10 to 20 degrees Celsius over diesel oil operation is normal. Important. Look for any leakages Tighten and change seals if necessary. It is important that the value of these instruments are checked and recorded every day, according to the log sheet, to assure that the operating staff will notice significant changes. The insulation and screen must always be in place when the engine is running because the exhaust manifold is hot and contact may cause fire or burning accidents. The exhaust gas from the engine drives the turbine which drives the compressor. The compressor unit sucks in and compresses the air required for the engine. The compressor side of the turbocharger should be washed daily. This should be carried out at no less than 75% engine load. Remove the screw on the top of the tank. Fill 0.4 litres of water into the water tank. Tighten the screw. Actuate the valve towards the spring and hold it for about 10 seconds until all water has been injected. Engines running on heavy fuel oil 
should have turbocharger's turbine washed once a week. Run the engine on marine diesel oil during water washing. Open the drain cock and ensure that hot exhaust is coming out of the drain pipe. If not, clear the blockage. Adjust charge air pressure to 0.3 bar by reducing engine load. Run for five minutes before washing. Connect cold water supply from ship's fresh water system to water pressure regulator connection. Open water injection valves before carefully opening the water to the hose. Check water pressure. If necessary, adjust 1 plus minus 0.2 bar. Cleaning should go on for 10 minutes, so that only water vapours and some drops of water will come out of the drain cock. Shut off water to the hose and close the water injection valves. Disconnect the hose. Run the engine at same load for 5 minutes to dry up the turbine, then shut the drain cock. Increase engine load to normal for evaporating of condensed water. Check the oil level once a day. The oil level should be inside the red circle while at standstill. If the colour of the lube oil is turned significantly darker than it was the day before, there is a possibility of seriously damaging the turbocharger. Increased foaming in the oil gauge glass is an indication that the oil should be changed. Remember, both bearings have their own oil reservoir. The turbocharger must not run when the oil is being changed. Open the drain plug and the filling plug on the bearing housing cover and drain the used oil. Fasten the drain plug. Fill the lubricating oil up to the upper mark on the side glass. Place a gasket on the filling plug and fasten it thoroughly. Remember, both bearings have their own oil reservoir. Generally, we recommend synthetic lubricating oil, which should be changed at least once per 5,000 hours. When refilling oil, follow the same procedure as when changing oil, except from opening the drain plug. Remember, both bearings have their own oil reservoir. The main purpose of the charge air cooler is to reduce the temperature of the charge air. Engines running on heavy fuel oil are always fitted with two stage coolers. Stage 1 is connected into the engine's jacket water circuit, while stage 2 is cooled by seawater or low temperature fresh water. The heat from the jacket water is used to heat the charge air at low engine load.
Two-stage air coolers are fitted with drain channels to ensure detection of leakages. If there is a water leakage, water will come out of the tail hole. Air leakage can be detected by a whistling sound. In case of water or air leakage, the end cover gasket has to be replaced. If you see the water cooling system is used, the end cover should be disassembled at regular intervals for inspection and cleaning. When out of service for longer periods, drain and leave drain and venting cocks open. If using seawater cooling, flush with fresh water.